Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Now, I want to begin by uh, sharing with you some interesting stats from our YouTube channel that you may not be aware of. Um, we have now risen to the grand total of 104 subscribers on our YouTube channel over the course of about five months, which we've been operating uh, these YouTube um, videos. And I think that's pretty good, a pretty good effort really for a small church in uh, regional Australia. So I'm, I'm pretty chuffed by that. Uh, also for every video that we produce, we receive up to around 370 views per video. Um, we don't always get that uh, number, but I think that's also pretty exceptional. In the uh, five months of our operation, we've had uh, in excess of 46,000 impressions. An impression is basically where somebody clicks on something because they say, oh, that looks interesting. We've had over 46,000 of those, and uh, uh, a little over 20% of those actually have come from YouTube recommendations. So YouTube is actually recommending our, com our content to other people who are on uh, YouTube and uh, that is generating click-throughs and uh, leading to greater than 2,700 views from that recommended content from YouTube, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, in the five months of our operation, we've also had in excess of 8,200 8, views and people have watched greater than 900 hours of our content. So again, you know, for a small church in regional Australia, that's pretty exceptional um, that people are watching that much of our content. And so I'm um, really gratified to see that. Just under 50% of our viewers are coming from Australia, all over Australia. We're not exactly sure which parts. And we also have a significant number of people who are watching us from Zimbabwe, from uh, South Africa. And also uh, we have a number of people from the UK who are also watching our content. So I want to give a, uh, give a big shout out to all of our online viewers. Um, we are so glad that you're with us. We're grateful that you're here with us and watching our content. And uh, thank you, thank you for watching. That's really good to have you here. So I want to begin from Psalm 18 and verses 30 to 31. Psalm 18 and verses 30 to 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord, and who is the rock except our God? Amen. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that your way is indeed perfect. We don't know how to order our own steps. We need you to guide us. We need you to show us the way. And because your way is perfect, we can trust in you. Your word is perfect. It's, your word is absolutely proven. And so we are grateful, dear Lord, that we can follow you, that we can take refuge in you. Guide our steps, we pray. Correct us when we're wrong. Help us to walk in the path that you have chosen for us. And Lord, we are so very grateful for our online viewers, our viewers from around Australia, our viewers from Zimbabwe, our viewers from South Africa and the UK and a few other places around the world. We are grateful for all of them, Lord, and we pray that you would bless them richly as they watch our content. Unite us together as one because we are all your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so I'm going to invite uh, Ben up now to uh, bring us the uh, reading for this morning. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Chris. Uh, today I'll be reading from Matthew 16, 21 to 28. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. 
but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with, the, with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. And uh, now I'd like to ask Johnson to come and share his message. Good morning to you all. Uh, we want to, I want to thank Ben for the reading of the word of God. Uh, let us pray. Our God, we give thanks for your prophets who speak your truth, whether the world wants to listen or not. We give you thanks for people like Jeremiah who find your ways a joy and a delight. Even when speaking them aloud brings pain and mockery. God of ages, speak through us today. In your name I pray, amen. Uh, this morning, um, I've decided to share with you on the theme, finding life, finding life. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew 16, verse 25. And my theme says, finding life. As Jesus was starting his final journey to Jerusalem, there to be crucified, he said this to his disciples, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life. In this monumental statement of our Lord, he gives us a keystone element in the arc of Christian faith and as well a fundamental insight into what life is and how it works. So from these few ways, many volumes could be written, and indeed many have been. Today, however, I want us to think about just one facet of this magnificent gem. I want to talk with you about finding life. Perhaps you say to me, Preacher, what do you mean finding life? I am alive. I have life already. All of us have. And my answer is, yes, my friend, this is true. But human life is of two kinds. The biological and the spiritual. And not everyone who is the biological has found the spiritual. And today I want to talk with you about this. Every born physical into this world, of course, is physical life. But there's a spiritual kind of life which to come into possession of it. Jesus says like being born again, being born again anew, being born not from the womb but from above. He said it in John 3. This is 1 to 10. To be sure, when we humans are physically born, we do possess more than mere physical life. There is a spiritual quality within us that a lot of people don't see. From our very birth, or perhaps before, we, we have a spiritual character. From the very start, we are more than mere animals. We are totally different from animals. So the spiritual quality we have is, as it is, we weak. It's like a weak, enlightened, and waiting to a torch flame to set it glow. We human persons are spiritual creatures. We have the high potential of coming alive spiritually, or have, having a spiritual life as well as a physical life. So we've got both the, both the biological and the spiritual life. So there is a life we have and the life we may have. As biologically, we are alive to the physical, world of motion and sight and sound so spiritual we may come alive to God and love the beauty of a more than physical kind. Our biological aliveness is merely the stage on which the high drama of living may be played. It is simply a framework made of energy and space and time upon which a tapestry of beauty may be woven around. 
It is the implication of what Jesus in this passage of scripture that unless one finds the life he is intended to have, he forfeits the one he already has. So he takes that life to bring out the reveal the worth of this one. Oh yes, I know that a lifetime of living involves a lot more than gazing at stars and looking for an agreeable place in the middle of a cloud nine. There is a lot of the mundane in the total process of our living. Naked we come into the world and naked we go. I know this. A man is born without teeth, not much hair, and eyes that won't focus. And if he remains very long in this world, he will probably leave it with, without teeth, not much hair, and eyes that won't focus. This sounds like an unpromising start and an unfruitful end. But between the two, a tremendous amount of living can be done. A good, look, a good book is not all title and finish. The book is what is between. What is in between is what the book is. There is a necessary rhythm, rhyme, a rather stupid one, which tells us of Solomon Grant, who was born on Monday, christened on Tuesday, married on Wednesday. He took ill on Thursday, was worse on Friday, died on Saturday, and was buried on Sunday. And so the rim goes, that was the end of Miss Grant. Not a very good biograph in life. A wise old Scotsman wrote to his granddaughter, I hope you live all of your life. Some people don't, they get stuck at some level, lower level, and never rise to where the real adventure is. Many souls are anchored in harbors and worth of great ships. Men are tethered with ropes too short. Caught in the quagmire world of things, they never get loose. And some get trapped in designs of their own making, get lost in the little playhouse they have fashioned for themselves. A humorous story is told of a fellow who loved the color yellow. He drove a yellow car, lived in a yellow house, with a yellow fence around it, and a yellow roses in yard. In the house, yellow carpet was everywhere yellow drops at all windows, and yellow paper on the walls. The fellow slept in a yellow bedroom, in a yellow be bed between yellow sheets, and in yellow pajamas. Eventually, he came down ill with yellow jaundice. Yellow jaundice. Of course, he took to his bed in much distress. The family doctor came to see him, and the man's wife sent the physician upstairs while he waited anxiously in the living room. The man of medicine was gone a very long time. And when he finally came down, the lady asked him, Oh, doctor, how is he? And the doctor replied, I don't know, I can't find him. Well, seriously, there are people who seem to get lost in their small yellow wells and never touch life anywhere on the outside. Many people, almost wholly preoccupied with the thing of this world, of the senses, they have very mistaken notion as to what is living. Many person biologically born has never come alive to anything but what is physical. The primitive biological drives that can and sometimes do drive us into the abyss. An infantile compulsion to reach and grasp and hold an adolescent engrossment with a sex age, an animal responds to the demands of appetite in general. So we end up living just like animals. There is nothing different from us from being animals. This is real not living. It is a denial of life or an invasion or an attempt at substitution. Unless we are alive at the spiritual level, the rest of life at the end is mostly frustration. One man dying said, I have tested every tip bit, gorged myself on everything, and now I'm about to die and I'm hungry. There is something missing in the human being. After I defined life as the ability of an organism to respond to its environment. Here's the paramount difference between a living thing and a lifeless one. We, have, we human persons have our existence in two environments. First, there is the physical, the visible. With its mountains and seas and streets, and all of us are very much alive to it. 
Then there is the spiritual, the invisible, with its mighty currents of divine love, its sweeping tides of moral power, its awesome d dimensions of depth. Some people are alive to this majesty, metaphysical environment in which we live, and they do respond to it. Others are oblivious, living as though it weren't there, and as though the physical were all what is there. Jesus is concerned that we do not get so bogged down at the lower level that we never find the higher, and thus ultimately miss the one and forfeit the other. He is concerned that we find life. And where do we find it? We find life in him, Jesus Christ. He says, whoever would save his life will lose it. That's what Jesus is saying. In other words, whoever looks out only for yourself is wasting yourself. Is consuming yourself upon yourself. And is using yourself up and ultimately will have nothing to show for it. Whoever cares only for his or her own satisfaction, his or her own pleasure, will perish under the burden of his or her self-centered concerns. So what does that mean? Then Jesus goes on to say something like else. He turns this great truth around and lets us see the other side of it. He says, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Jesus is saying, whoever can get beyond himself or herself and begin to put himself or herself out of my sake will come alive in new ways. You are no longer the same person, but you are a new creature. He who is willing to move beyond life at the lower level will find life on a higher one. He who breaks out from the narrow, restrictive prison walls of self-concern will enter into bigness and brightness he had never seen before because of who Jesus is. Always he who could find must venture. Columbus embarking from the shores of Europe to sail the wild Atlantic. Livingstone leaving the comforts of England to touch the heart of Africa. And anyone, any human person who moves out beyond himself to find life can happen. Jesus is saying, venture. Venture for the break loose and move out. Get beyond yourself. Give that life you have to something beyond. And says, Jesus, if you move into the world that is beyond you, you will find the wonder that is there. And if you do it for my sake, that who wonder is life, life of lofter kind, life on a higher level, not just ordinary life, life on a higher level. You are no longer living just for the ordinary things, but for the extraordinary things, spiritual life. So move out, says Jesus, and you will come alive to what is out there. Come into me and you will come alive to me. I am the bread of life. I am. That is what Jesus is saying. And I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. So which means when we come out and live those things, we are now opting for the higher life. So in the prologue to the gospel according to John, we have this word concerning Christ. He came to his own home. And his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Born of God. He is the best Christ has come to give us. To all who believe him. Only to those who believe in his name. He gives us power to become children of God. Power to become what we are not. We were God's creatures, yes, but with respect to life, not his children yet, until believing. We receive from him the power to become children of God when we believe in him. So children having been born are alive. Eight pounds of infant, born of a mother and a father, how alive. And how wonderful it is, this life. And a grown-up man or woman believing in Christ, born of God, how alive. And how infinitely wonderful this life also is. When you start believing in this God who is there for us. Born once of the flesh, born again of God. Coming alive first to the world of senses and things. Coming alive then to the world of spirit. You now live in the world of the spirit. And so is the person complete, so is the person holy. By definition, that is unfinished, which is not yet all that it may be. You and I may be children of God, not China dolls, but living children. And real we are incomplete until we are 
children of God. Until we are born again, we are incomplete. Find life. Yes, and you can, my friend, the capability is within you. If you want to find life, the candle and the wick are there. As it is written in Proverbs 20, verse 27, the spirit of a man is the lamb of the Lord. As the lamb is made to receive the flame, so you are made for the life-giving touch of the divine spirit. It's up to you to receive him or not. To receive Christ and to move with a new life. Or you just only set your life for the ordinary ones. Only the biological, which is totally, sometimes not different from the animal kingdom. You are created for better things. May the good Lord help you so that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And you aim for higher levels, not for the lower things. Because God has created you for those things. May the good Lord bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Okay, let us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you again. As we have heard your way, we have tied our lives with your grace and your beauty showed upon us, whether we recognize your presence or not. We have come to us in Jesus, reaching through the centuries to show us that love cannot die and that your kingdom is among us. You keep coming to us through your Holy Spirit who dances around us our lives, learning to catch us up. That we see the world through your eyes. You come to us and we tend to you to receive your gifts, to know your love and to join the dance of life. Thank you. Um, I'll ask the Chris to come and pray for the offering. Thank you all again. We've come to the time when we're going to collect uh, our offering. Um, of course, we're not actually physically taking up an offering here this morning because uh, there's nobody here other than a couple of people. But uh, I'd ask that you would uh, remember the church, that you would put aside your uh, offerings uh, at home and uh, send them in via the channels that we're advertising. Um, watch for the end of the video and you'll uh, find where you can actually deposit those and the methods by which you can actually bring those into us. So we're very grateful for everything that you do to support this work. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of being a part of what you are doing on this earth today. You love everyone. You love us so much, Father, that you do not want anyone to perish. And so the work of the gospel is, uh, the work of evangelism is, is preaching this gospel in all the world uh, and so that uh, people can actually come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so we pray, Father, that you would take these gifts, these uh, offerings, uh, and uh, also the uh, personal efforts of people who are involved in, in making these videos, making them work, and everything else connected with the work of evangelism in this church, that you would just multiply all of that, Father, for the blessing of people so that more people can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.